I've just concluded a cruise on the world's newest, largest, and most expensive cruise ship ever built, Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Seas. It began operation in January of 2024 and is currently conducting seven day sailings out of Miami, Florida over to the Caribbean. It costs $2 billion to build, holds well over 10,000 passengers and crew at full capacity, has 20 decks, eight unique neighborhoods, seven pools, an aqua theater, a surfing simulator, an ice skating rink, and the largest water park at sea, complete with six slides. It also has an ultimate family townhome suite that is sold out for the entire year 2024 at $75,000 a week. Now in this video, I'm going to give all of you a full, honest, and thorough review of my time on board the world's largest cruise ship, Icon of the Seas, going over the good and, depending on your perspective of the situation, the bad. I'll also talk about any grievances and worries that I have about this brand new cruise ship. The sailing that I would embark on will be a quick three-day cruise taking place between the dates of January 20th through January 23rd of 2024 and would not be available to the general public. This will be known as a shakedown test or pre-cruise if you will, primarily consisting of execs that work with Royal Caribbean or within the cruise ship industry as well as travel agents. I was able to get on board because I am a newly appointed travel agent, still on training rules right now, got a lot to learn. However, myself and my colleagues with Lux Rally Travel can service all of you fine folk. Just check out the link in the comment section below and in the description box. Now being fully transparent with you, being that this was an environment invited crews, all of the drinks were free, all of the activities were free, even though primarily all of the activities except for maybe one or two I will explain later on in the video are also free on board Icon of the Seas. On embarkation day or the first day of my cruise I was extremely excited to board Icon of the Seas because a normal week on board typically will run you around the range of anywhere between $3,000 up to as high as $100,000. This does depend on your cabin type that you choose however as far as you getting a normal balcony usually it'll run you at least as of right now you're watching this when the ship has first launched in the range of seven to nine thousand dollars getting through the terminal and boarding icon of the seas was quick and simple considering the ship was going to be sailing at just over half capacity about four thousand passengers on board once i did board icon of the seas the first thing that you see is the pearl this is a giant structural beam that does keep the ship all together however it's been designed to look beautiful with kinetic energy and separate panels that move and it changes colors very beautiful sight to see it's kind of like you're welcome aboard once you arrive on Icon of the Seas. Looking around the Pearl, we were in the Royal Promenade. My first impression was just shock and awe at how massive that area is. If you had ever been on any other Royal Caribbean ship like the Freedom Class, the Quantum Class, or the Oasis Class, where they either have the Royal Promenade or the Royal Esplanade, it just looked like everything had been combined to make one gigantic area. They had Starbucks, they had the Spotlight Karaoke, they had Sorrento's Pizza, the Comedy Club. A a lot of things just were packed into that area and some people might say it's a mall like environment I tend to agree to some extent however on icon of the seas this is a very big beautiful open area that nobody wanted to stay away from you could also walk the full circumference of the royal promenade not only on the first deck but the second deck of that neighborhood and if you walk up the stairs inside of the pearl it'll land you not only in this scenic view of a window that is made possible by the pearl structural beam but there's also something known as the Pearl Cafe over there, where you can get all types of cookies and cakes and delectables and pastries and sandwiches 24 hours a day. As I made my way to my cabin, I noticed there was something different about the elevator setup on Icon of the Seas that you don't see on other cruise ships. First of all, instead of it being two parallel sets of elevators, it was more of a circular motion in alphabetical order. It was also a destination elevator. Now, I know some of you out there, like myself, have a love-hate relationship with destination elevators. Instead of pressing the one and only button available, like you would for a traditional elevator, and eventually, hopefully, an elevator will show up in a random spot for you to have to run into, with the destination elevators, you pick the deck that you want to be whisked off to, the system will assign you an elevator by letter, and you will wait there. Now, I will say that it is a cool concept. I've seen it before in a more traditional design on board MSC ships, except over there, they tell you how long you're going to wait before the elevator shows up. On Icon of the Seas, you have no idea how long the elevator is going to be before you are able to get in said elevator. It's also a little slow as far as the system. Hopefully, by this time, when they have the public go on board it is operating a little faster but that was a worry that I had with so many people on board as high as 7,000 passengers plus how long would it be that those people are sitting there waiting around twiddling their thumbs and decide to either take the stairs or just give up entirely 
Arriving to my state room on deck 14, I'd be staying in state room 14297. This would be located to the back or aft of the ship, and the style of cabin would be known as a surfside inside balcony. The surfside area is the family area on board in the back or aft of the ship, and it is a nice cabin that I was in. Very beautifully designed, very functional. One thing I noticed about these ships as opposed to other Royal Caribbean ships is that they did go out of their way to at least accommodate in the shower area. Typically, on cruise ships we know the bathroom is usually pretty small unless you're in a suite of some sort however the shower area was a lot wider so if you're a bigger person a taller person it could indeed accommodate the only thing i will say about that particular cabin as far as the location if you are not sailing with a family and well you have a problem with yelling kids all day long that area, that neighborhood is not exactly the place that you want to be. Trust me, because you will hear screaming kids all day long. But thankfully, that area is a little bit more dormant or quiet in the evening hours. After I left my cabin, I would explore the beautiful brand new world's largest cruise ship icon of the sea, starting with the family area Surfside. I had to figure out where all that commotion was coming from. Down there was a beautiful area, like I said, designed to be a family area. They had plenty of free eateries. The only one that wasn't free was a specialty dining option known as Pier 7. They have a bar in which there are drinks for both the adults and the kids to hang out. Very nice area. I would then go up to the top deck to check out the famous Thrill and Chill Islands on board. I know that sounds familiar because they have these same unique areas over in Royal Caribbean's private island located in the Bahamas, Perfect Day at Coco Cay. I had said on many occasions that when it came to this ship, at least on the top decks, it literally looks like they took Perfect Day at Coco Cay and put it on top of Icon of the Seas. They do have the Thrill Island Water Park complete with six free slides, of drop slides of all sorts. It was a great time. They also have the surfing simulator flow rider also free and in the very back or aft of the ship in the top deck they have the hideaway. This is an adult only area where you have to be 18 or older to access that particular area and it is very nice throughout the day and during the evening. They have a basketball court, tons of activities and festivities for you to indulge in, even something for the kids and the adults. It's somewhat of a zip line like hanging deal called Crown's Edge suspending you 100 54 feet above water however that is not a free activity to indulge in it will set you back about 90 bucks a person i have to admit when it came to that whole top deck whether it be chill island thrill island or the hideaway it seemed very open i would be willing to bet that even if that ship was at full capacity because remember 4,000 people just over half capacity when i was on board you probably wouldn't even know it however i will say something that i am curious about whenever the ship is at full capacity i do believe that naturally people tend to gather and congregate in certain areas that are the most popular. For example, in Chill Island, they have a giant pool bar, but is it enough to accommodate, let's say, upwards of a couple hundred to maybe a thousand people over in that area? Same with the surfing simulator, same with the water slides. I do believe it will be okay. However, just looking at the popular areas that were blatantly obvious versus, let's say, the walking around and lounging and relaxing areas... Well, I'm just legitimately curious. I did see this issue firsthand, however, when I checked out the brand new, highly anticipated area on board Icon of the Seas, the Aqua Theater. Now, this place is state of the art, very technologically advanced, very beautiful area. They have the Hook Seafood restaurant over there, lots of lounging areas in the back. It's unbelievable. However, the issue is when it came to the theater seating, there isn't really a lot. Meaning that if it is a very popular show that is going on over there, like the diving and swim show, well, people are going to crowd in there. And I don't believe from what I saw firsthand with half capacity that there is enough seating to accommodate, meaning people have to stand in the back and they're stacking on top of each other. It's going to be an interesting situation when it is full capacity because, well, it's one of the most popular shows. and It's only going to be run maybe once or twice during the entire sailing, weather permitting, because even though it is covered by a dome as opposed to on the Oasis class ships in the back, where there wasn't covering any type of shaking of the ship when it's rocking. All I'm going to say is if you are going to see the Aqua Action Show in the Aqua Theater, make sure you get there as early as possible. Otherwise, they're going to be standing up with everybody else cramped like sardines. However, the same can't be said with the other theaters like the Royal Theater. They have a show there, The Wizard of Oz. Maybe you've heard of it. Hands down, one of the best shows I have ever seen. I would argue that that would compete with any Broadway show that you have ever seen. 
absolutely first class. I wish I could go see it again. They also have Absolute Zero, the ice skating rink. The ice skating show was great. I would say there was a little bit of a slow start. However, they had a juggler in there that I've seen on Wonder of the Seas, absolutely amazing. Brings out a very Cirque du Soleil type feel, but the show overall was great. They also do allow ice skating there throughout the day. I can't remember if they are going to charge you an additional cost or not. Same with the laser tag on board, and I do apologize for that, but I'm sure somebody in the comment section will be able to help all of you out if you are curious about such a thing. There were a million activities going on on board from karaoke to the comedy show. However, again, as far as the venue, when it came to the comedy show, I didn't get to see one at all because it was extremely tight spacing in that particular area and it will sell out. So like I said, the same with the Aqua Theater. Make sure you get there earlier. That way that you can snag the best seat possible. During the evening hours, there are tons and tons of bars and lounges that are open to serve all of you fine folks drinks that are staying open even between the hours of midnight, 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. when it comes to the casino, which is very massive by the way. However, I didn't play there, so I don't know how your chances are. House Always Wins, do keep in mind for that. Also, when it came to the nightclub, it is a beautiful two-story nightclub. I would argue that it is right on par with the Virgin Voyages nightclub. They're both two stories, and the music in there was great. The vibe in there was great. The ambiance was great. The only problem I really had was not staying still. On other ships, smaller ships, usually there's just like one area that everybody's gathering at during the evening hours, with the exception of the casino. There were party people and active people and social people literally all all over the ship from the hideaway to the Royal Promenade where there were bars to the nightclub and well that's something that you're going to have to adjust to. You find your favorite spot and then you primarily will stay there on board Icon of the Seas. That way you aren't taking three to four days walking around the entire ship. <laughs> I'm joking or am I? The free food that was available was okay. It wasn't bad by any means, especially by cruise ship standards. However, I would argue that NCL has better food and Virgin has better food, in my personal opinion. But don't get me wrong, I still ate and gained about five pounds. And I was also just a little jealous because all the execs were there. And unfortunately, all of the specialty dining restaurants were completely booked and sold out, catering to any of the people that were affiliated with Royal Caribbean. However, I did get one opportunity to check out Azumi in Central Park. That's where they've placed it now. Central Park is a very beautiful area that was not only on the Icon class, it was on the Oasis class, the class before the Icon class. And they have a new jazz club over there called Luz. And also from that area, because it is one deck up from the beautiful Pearl on the Royal Promenade, you can also see that too. Overall, when it came to Icon of the Seas, obviously it is a very gorgeous ship. Not too many bad things to say. Some people could argue that it is too big. However, I do believe the purpose was to not only try to accommodate and satisfy satisfy all passengers on board from every single walk of life. A lot of people have argued that the ship is now the destination. I would agree to that to some extent. However, how do you explain their private island perfect day at Coco Cay? By the way, when we stopped over there, that was our only port of call over in the Bahamas. I did check out their new adult only area, Hideaway Beach. Starting price to go into that area is $39. However, I haven't seen such thing. A lot of people are going during peak season and they're saying they're getting upwards of about $80 to $90. Just keep that in mind. The prices will fluctuate and they do vary. Getting back to the idea of the ship is the destination concept, I do believe, like I said, there's some merit to it. However, I believe Royal Caribbean has a different focus that I've mentioned in a previous video. That Royal Caribbean is now at this point in time to bring in more families, more so focused on a theme park at sea type deal to potentially go ahead and stop the mouse Disney Cruise Line from becoming just that. I do believe that Royal Caribbean has done an amazing job at it. And well, it looks like this is something as far as the icon concept that they are going to be very successful at. Other than all of that, there's not too much more that I can say about Icon of the Seas. Like I said, I was only there for a mere three days. Wish I could have stayed longer because even when I was on the previous class of ships, Wonder of the Seas with Oasis class, I said that a week is not long enough to see the entire ship and I would say the exact same thing with Icon. So I will be going back at some point. Do keep in mind they have two more of these coming up. They got Star of the Seas next year in 2025. Then they have another ship that hasn't been named yet. And there are rumors that they are going to be creating two more, four and five. But I guess we're going to have to see just the only drawback to these larger ships is that since they are so big, they can't accommodate and go to every single port of call, every single island or destination. This, of course, does unfortunately mean that there is the potential for your port options and places that you want to visit to be somewhat limited. Anyway, this is what I got on Icon of the Seas, a short, honest review for a short and honest cruise. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you end up going on a regular seven day sailing, I would love to
love to hear your thoughts as well. And, well, we'll keep it on moving. I appreciate all you guys. I love all of you. Hit that like button on your way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you check out my amazing travel agent partner, Lux Rally Travel, to get the vacation of a lifetime. Either I can book your vacation for you or my amazing, extremely knowledgeable colleagues can also give you a hand. And we don't just do cruises. We can book your hotel, resorts, all-inclusives, flights from luxury, premium, and everything in between. Make sure you check us out. Link in the description box below. I appreciate all of you. I'll see all of you very soon. Take it easy.